Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about limits and limit notation. So limits are central to all of calculus. Limits are used to define what's called derivatives, which are rates of change. So for example, if you have a function that tells you the temperature of a room, the derivative of that function will tell you uh, how hot the room is getting or how cold the room is getting. So how fast it's heating up or how fast it's cooling down. So limits are used uh, for derivatives, which describe rates of change. So in this video, we're going to talk about the notation behind limits, okay? So let big L be a real number. So be a real number. So this is the limit notation. So you write LM. So the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to L. So this is read the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to L. So this means, so means that well, it basically means that whenever x gets really, 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 really close to c, f of x gets really, 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 really close to l. Remember, f of x is the y value. So when the x value gets close to c, the y value gets close to l. It means that when x gets close to c, you might say, what does close mean? Ah, <laughs> so how close? As close as you like, right? You can literally get as close as you like. So when x gets close to c, f of x gets close to l. Maybe now we should do uh, a simple example of a limit so you can see what it means intuitively and so you can see what it means uh, graphically. I think I have something here to erase, so let's do it. So let's draw a quick graph. Say we have the y-axis and say we have the x-axis. So x, y. And let's make up some numbers. Let's see, so like 1, 2, 3, 1. And I'll put a little hole here, and I'll come down here and go through zero, and come up here at one, two, three, four. Just, just use different numbers, and that's good. Okay, so let's compute some limits. Let's do it. So first, let's find the limit as x approaches zero of f of x. So this is asking, what happens to the y value when x gets close to zero? So the idea is this, you want to approach zero from both directions, okay, from the left and from the right. So when x gets close to zero from the left, the y value is zero. When x gets close to zero from the right, the y value is zero. Therefore, the limit is zero. So you have to be able to approach from both directions, right, to get an answer. So as x approaches zero from the left, the y value approaches zero. As x approaches zero from the right, the y value approaches zero. Therefore, the limit is zero. Let's look at approaching three. So let's approach 3. However, I'm going to put a little negative sign here. So this negative sign means we're approaching only from the left. Okay, If you put a plus sign, it means you're approaching from the right. So we're approaching 3 from the left. So as the x value approaches 3 from the left, it looks like the y value is 1. But now, let's approach 3 from the right. So we'll use a little plus sign for that. So as x approaches 3 from the right, let's see what happens. So here's, here's x. It's approaching 3, so the y value gets close to 1, 2, 3, 4. So when you approach 3 from the left, right, the x value gets really, really close to 3, the y value gets close to 1, so we say the limit is 1. As x approaches 3 from the right, the y value gets really, 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 really close to 4, so we say the limit is 4. So what would that mean in terms of the limit? Well, that means that the regular limit, you can think of this as a two-sided limit. These are called one-sided limits. The regular limit means from both directions. So as x approaches 3, well, from the left we get 1, from the right we get 4. Therefore, we get no answer when we approach from both directions. So in this case, you would say the limit d and e, and that means does not exist. In this example here, um, I didn't use one-sided limits. I just showed you from the left you get 0, from the right you get 0, and therefore the limit is 0. If you wanted to write it formally, you'd write the limit as x approaches 0 from the left. Or from the left we know we get 0. Then you can do it from the right, so the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. Well, from the right we get 0. So whenever you get the same answer from the left and from the right, that's the value of the limit. If you get different values, then the limit does not exist. You'll notice there was a hole here also. You might say, why is the value 1 if there's a hole? Well, when we're talking about limits, we only care about getting really, 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 really close to 3 from the left, right? We actually don't care what happens at 3, right? Uh, we, don't, we don't care. So when x gets close to th 3 from the left, the y value is, gets really, really, really close to 1. It never actually gets to 1, right? It just gets really close. There's, a, there's an open circle there at 1, right? If you were to, say, evaluate f of 3, 
Let's talk about that. What is the y value of 3? Well, the, the y value at x equals 3 is 1, 2, 3, 4. So that would be 4. So the y value of 3 is 4, but the limit as you approach 3 from the left is 1. And again, why? It's because we only care about getting really, 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 really close to uh, 3, not actually being at 3. So the main idea behind limits is what happens to the y value when x gets close to some x value? What are limits for? Limits are used to define derivatives. A derivative is a rate of change. It's studied later on in calculus. So limits are central and necessary for all of calculus, right? For all of calculus. And that's why we usually study them at the beginning of a course. I hope this video made sense. If you're watching this on the internet, thank you so much for visiting my channel. That's it.